Here we are today in the fifth of the third. 2.17, Sunday. Sunday meet. Paradise in our church. And we'll start today by having a look around. See what's going on. Those who missed the news, I usually cherry pick what's going on, what's being said. I was watching a uh, a Jewish family prepare a meal for Passover. They do Passover, the Judaic Jews. And they had this little girl, a little Jewish girl, singing. And uh, she was um, singing and summonsing, you could say, or summonsing in song. At the table, had this huge table, you know, the Jews don't mess around when they eat. And she had a beautiful voice and she was singing uh, and calling on Elijah to come to the table and drink from this big cup, family cup of wine. And I thought to myself, boy, oh boy. I mean, like, so out of touch. Huh? It's just, just about scriptural, wasn't it? Uh, who, who do they say that I am? Some say that you're John the Baptist or Elijah. or they just got no idea. Right? Summonsing a man. Summonsing, uh, they're teaching their child to call upon a dead man. Elijah. And, and these are the Jews. These are Jewish people. I love the Jews, but that's beside the point. Calling on the Elijah to come and drink and join in with them in their Passover meal. I know that Jews through history have worshipped the S-U-N. Actually worship. there we go. Open that up there. Actually, uh, yeah, didn't want to come in? Sorry about that? Oh, yeah. They didn't want to... <laughs> they, uh, they worshipped the sun, you know, the Jews, the S-U-N. But they don't want to receive Messiah's way or Jesus' way or Jesus as their Messiah. And it's no different, is it, with the Gentiles today. They don't mind doing all these other things, you know. But very few want to surrender to Messiah. Very few have it in their heart to fully surrender to Messiah, to Jesus. They're not really sure whether he's going to come through. Well, that's not fine. We're going to look at that later on today. Hey? The U.S. Uh, United States Attorney General, Senator Jeff Session, lied while under oath when he was being sworn in to Trump's government. And uh, when they asked Trump, what do you think of this, Mr. Trump, that... Uh, Jeff Session lied under oath. It, do you still see him as fit for his position? I do, I do, I do, and just walked on. When this tells you something about Mr. Trump's uh, heart condition, they say he's a Christian. And I know that he says, God bless and God save America a lot, but. So did the Kennedys, didn't they? I think they all say that, don't they? I get it in the street every day. God bless. You know? I'm just wondering which God they're talking about, that's all. And uh, God is uh, good and all the rest of it. So, um, Mr. Session, Jeff Session was lied under oath and said he had no connections with the Russian 
diplomats or any one of them, but yet he had a meeting in 216 with a Russian uh, ambassador. I mean, and now he's backtracking and saying, well, I do recall now <laughs> that I did have one meeting. Well, and they still got him in office. This tells you about the climate we're in. This tells you that the Lord's word is true. It, we're up against liars. Liars in the churches. Liars in the pulpit. Liars in the banks. Liars in the government. You're not going to go anywhere with a liar. I don't care who the liar is, male or female, educated or uneducated. They're of the devil. It's not of the spirit of God to quicken us to lie. It's a, that's the spirit of the devil. That's the way of the devil. Africa in the mess again, as usual. War and drought has brought starvation like never before. They're looking down the barrel of 20 million people in the last six months heading for full-on, full-blown starvation. 20 million. And Donald Trump is uh, withdrawing and aiming to cut aid to Africa, even after hearing that. Australia has already cut their aid. Australia's aid for Africa and other third world countries is at an all-time low. This tells us something again, doesn't it? This tells us that we're certainly in the preparation stages of the Antichrist to come. Because things are going to become a very, very big mess for the Antichrist to come in and shine and say, look, I'm going to fix it all up, I'm going to sort it all out, and you just follow me. All the way to hell. <laughs> because people love that, don't they? People want that. People want all their finances sorted, they want all their bills paid, they want uh, cheap, comfy, they want ha ha he he ho ho. Don't they? That's what human, endemic people want. Because that's all they can uh, uh, understand. That's all they can see as prosperity and progress and going ahead. But that's not what the Lord says. And you have a look at the track record of the Lord. His writings, Old Testament, New, and, and his, uh, one of his most powerful men in the New Testament writings, Paul. He, was no, he wasn't living the life of Riley, I tell you. He wasn't living no high life. He's looking for bread and water. But the regeneration will come. The new heaven and earth will come. The judgment day will come. Okay, soccer, eh? Let's have a look at the sporting arena. The Sydney FC are wearing rainbow bootlaces to promote and include. There's that word include. When you, get, when you have a word include or inclusive, you put a forward slash common common ground there. Include, they're wearing the, the rainbow bootlaces to promote and include LGBT players in sport. And of course there was the gay parade, the sodomite parade last night in Sydney. 200 floats. But you know, I, I march for Jesus. I, I'm in the army of the Lord and I march for Jesus. And you know what? When you're going to stand up and march in an army or you know, whether it's the Sodomite army or whether it's the army of the Lord, you've got to be expected, you know, you've got to expect to be fired at and to be criticised and, and mocked. And Well, it's good enough for the followers of Jesus to accept mocking and 
scourging and and, and, and all the rest of it's good enough for the Sodomite army, isn't it? Well, they've got nothing to whinge about. Eh? There, there should be no, oh, you know, you're discriminating. Well, look, I tell you, the world and the people of the world offend and discriminate against what I stand for every minute of the day. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? Uh, like, da, I didn't think of it that way. Brian Houston was on the TV this morning um, saying that uh, we, we shouldn't be contending all the time, you know. But yet the scriptures say we are to contend for the faith, nothing else. It's full time contending. When you're really walking with Jesus, you, you're fighting the fight, as Paul said. Paul mentioned it as fighting the fight, a fight, or contending for the fight. Daily. No no breaks, no smoke over. Can someone say amen? Hey? Mr. Houston was saying this morning that everyone sees through their own lenses. Lens on Lilliput. It used to be a show when I was a little boy. Um, my mate's dad used to be on TV drawing. Yeah. Len Cook, Lenny Cook. And I used to ride motorcycles with, with Mitchell Cook. Lens on Lilliput. Anyway, um, Brian says that everyone sees their through their own lenses. If that's not ecumenical, I don't know what it is. So th basically, Brian Houston's message this morning, very subtly and very devilishly and very cunningly, just sort of the usual inclusive message, including everything, every doctrine, everyone. Oh, but I think the scripture means this. Oh, but I think the scripture means this. Oh, but I think the scripture means this. You know, like, it sort of sounds like a Pentecostal Bible study. You know what I mean? Or an Orthodox Bible study. We're getting people coming along and they really enjoying themselves, you know, at the Bible study. They come along and everyone's joining because they feel included, because everyone has a say. Everyone arrogantly has to have their little say. There's no teacher in the room. It's just everyone throwing their 10 cents worth in and everyone going away, scratching their head. Which way did he go, you know? What did we conclude? There's no conclusion without a teacher. I never found conclusion and closure to anything in my life until I met the great teacher, hey? the Christ, until I started listening to his spirit who guided me into all truth. Oh, Brian Houston, eh? There's no wonder. It's one world. It, it's all inclusive. It's everyone, everyone come in and everyone have a throw and, you know, you hang on to your sin and I hang on to mine. We don't want to mention that. Things could get awkward. Awkward. Things could get awkward. When we start talking about personalised sin. You know, you just keep your sin and I'll keep mine. We can just get on together. Everything will be sweet. There will be no interruptions. No arguments and nothing. It, it's all about love. It's all about unity without Christ. <laughs> uh, nearly, you know, you nearly have to take a bucket with you to vomit in, you know, when you hear the talk of some people today who claim to be church leaders and, and church goers. Well, they are only church goers. But, you know what I mean? You nearly have to take a bucket with you. Have a portable bucket like a vomit bag that you have on the plane. I hear it, sometimes I hear this stuff on the street, it's just shocking. 
Brother Shadrach said to me the other day, Hey, Dad, you know, very innocently, I like that innocent thing, you know. That's nice. Innocent, you know. Is it sin, Dad, to uh, say amen in, in like common conversation? He didn't want to abuse the word, see. I said, not that I know of. Amen means yes. Just another form of yes. And I thought, uh, that really touched me, you know, that Brother Shadrach would be concerned about such a fine point. I like that. There's a bit of awareness there. So, there's a tick for Brother Shadrach. Manny Pacquiao, Filipino champion boxer, very good boxer, has backed down from the fight with Jeff Horn. They call him the Hornet. And I've watched him spar a bit. He's, got, he's very powerful. Unknown. And uh, it was Manny Pacquiao's manager that seen Horn sparring and fighting and said, I want you to fight my boy, Manny Pacquiao. Multiple millions involved. And so, what's he talking about boxing for? What are you talking about, Willis? And so, uh, Manny Pacquiao's back, back down. He said, I have another fight lined up with a lot more money. I think about 38 million or something. I don't know. But Manny Pacquiao's a billionaire anyway. And he's got his finger in political pies because his wife's a politician. I mean, well, when I was watching the news and I seen that, I thought, I thought to myself, straight away, well, I didn't really think. Holy Ghost just hit me like a ton of bricks and said, be content with food and clothing. <laughs> and Manny Pacquiao claims to be a Christian. I think he is. I really do. I don't believe he's a disciple of Jesus. Man. But he is a Christian. Just like the Roman Catholics, Christians, Jehovah Witnesses. Mormons, they're all Christian. All of the One World Church get along fine in, in, in the world. Lots of basketball players and, and gridiron players. I'm a Christian. Of course you are. I believe you are. Donald Trump. I'm a Christian. Now, now listen here. I believe you are, Donald. I believe you are. But you're not a disciple of Jesus. That's for sure. Jesus is about bringing walls down, not building them. Amen. He is my peace. He has broken down the Mexican wall. He is my peace. Oh, Jesus is my peace. It's sad, but a lot of Mexicans are Christian too, aren't they? But they're not disciples of Jesus. A lot of difference. A lot of difference. The difference is most probably one scripture. Come out from among them and be separated to me outside the religious gate, suffering the reproach of the Christ without the camp. Hebrews 13, 13. Moving right along. Aboriginal Alcoholic Rehabilitation Centre is in crisis in the north. Management has siphoned off all the money. Half a mil in the last few years. And the centre can no longer be maintained. It'd have to be terror, wouldn't it? That was my prophecy for 2017. Hardship for the Aboriginal people. The management are terrorising the finances. Right? I knew a young uh, Christian Aboriginal girl many years ago and she used to tell me about all the parties that the management used to have in, in, in different uh, government funded organisations and how they lived like that, the life of Riley, you know. Caviar, best of wine and champagne and trips here, trips there, government money. I just think to myself, really? He said, yeah, they lived it up. Best of cars, everything. 
The money was supposed to be for the Aboriginal people. So, virtually, they're, they're smiting their own people. You can't get any lower than that, can you? No. Well, it's it's the norm in the third world, isn't it? African management smiting the Africans, 20 million hungry, and they're living uh, like Idi Amin. Hey, Philippines. They're, they're claiming to, oh, we're here for the people. And they're there for themselves. And it never changes, decade after decade. And they, they just seem the poor get poorer and the rich uh, get richer. And, and to think of all the gold. Philippines has the most gold in the ground in the world. You know? It's one of the richest countries in the world, but yet one of the poorest. It, it's ironic, isn't it? Anyway, here's a bit of uh, useful information for you. If a polar bear is chasing you, be worried. A 700 kilo polar bear can run at 40 k. And that's when they're not annoyed. <laughs> Why did I say that? Because God is great. God is awesome. He created a 700 kilo bear. I can't even run 40 k. I mean, not even 10 k probably. 40 k is an hour. Dear, oh dear. Hey? Finally, Jesus has become someone you go to uh, when you are young, you know, or I should say, you know, you go through that Jesus stage, you know, when you're young. It's sort of like a stage. It's just a silly stage I'm going through. I'm not in love. Oh no. Just a stage, you know, you go through it and it's next. And we're growing up now, sort of like a, you know, like a Guy Sebastian thing. You know, he's grown up now and he's he's all whirled up and muddied up and muddied up with sin and inked up. All the tattoos. Just a new creation of the devil, you know. Another one that put the shame on Jesus, just like Aretha Franklin. She's in a pink Cadillac now. She don't need Jesus. But Jesus is, is something you go through when you are young. Or if you're cash strapped, Jesus is a good calling card, you know. Hello, Jesus. Cash strapped. Maybe lonely. Maybe looking for a handout. Jesus. That's a, that's a common name around the handout. Jesus. Maybe a job. Looking for a job. Jesus. Maybe looking for a bow. That's a, a young man. Or maybe an arrow. I mean a jick. No woman, no cry. Um, <laughs> no woman, no cry. Or maybe if you're not sexy. You know, if you're not, if you're just sort of olive drab sort of thing. No, if you're not sexy, Jesus, that's the good way to go. I mean, it's all so true, isn't it? That's all Jesus is to people. That's all he is. Here we are on the 5th of the 3rd, 2.17. Polar bears doing 40k. It's okay, Trump, you know, Trump. Trump the Christian, they are Christians. You need to get ready for my message coming up. It's called, I'm not a Christian. Ooh. I can feel it now. Ooh. I am not a Christian. Oh, lovely. Let's go in the message today in the writings of 1 Peter 1. 2, 2, 2, 2. That's... 2 Peter 2, 22. Faithful saying. Dogs, vomit, pigs, mud. Yes. Faithful saying. But we're in 1 Peter 1. We're in 1 Peter. First letter of Peter. He writes to the pilgrims. That's us. That's us. He's writing to you. He's writing to us. 1 Peter 1, 
chapter 1, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 1. Peter, an apostle of Jesus the Christ, to the pilgrims of the dispersion in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Verse 2, elect, according to the foreknowledge of Father, in sanctification of the Spirit by or for obedience through the blood of the Christ. Grace to you and peace be multiplied. Verse 3, 1 Peter 1. Blessed be Father of the Lord Jesus the Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope this time through the resurrection of the Christ from the grave. Verse 4, to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, does not fade, reserved in heaven for you. 1 Peter 1, 5, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last days. Verse 6, 1 Peter 1, In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. Verse 7, That the genuineness of your faith be much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honour and glorify the Christ at the revelation of the Christ. Verse 8, 1 Peter 1, whom having no not seen you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy exceeding, joy inexpressible and full of glory. Verse 9, receiving the end of your faith, salvation of your soul. Final verse today is 10 and 1 Peter chapter 1. Of this salvation the prophets have inquired and searched carefully who prophesied of the grace the power that would come to you absolutely wonderful last week we looked at your heavenly inheritance not your earthly inheritance but your heavenly, heavenly. And I said last week that inheritance, inheritance is, 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 kind of lifts you up, you know. It's a bit of a, it's a bit of an encouragement, isn't it? Hey, to know that you've got an inheritance coming. I know my dad's inheritance was a blessing to me. And he left me these words. Don't let the mongrels get you down. <laughs> uh, what a blessing. One of the greatest blessings I've ever had. Because in that wording, don't let the mongrels get you down like mongrel breed. Not purebreds. They're the only ones that are going to try and get you down. Mongrel. I, I just had revelation on revelation. You know? My dad, in my lifetime, never came to the Lord. But he had so many things. He said so many things that were so biblical. Very strange. Anyway, and a lot of people didn't like him because he spoke from his heart and spoke the truth up to the light he had. They didn't like that. He stood his ground with anyone and everyone. Very artistic man and very talented man. But from what I know of him, he was hell bound, not born of the Spirit of God. Sad indeed. But the truth is the truth. Last week, your heavenly inheritance. This week, we want to get this clear. The title of our message today is Reserved for You. Who? Reserved for you. Who? And we'll find that 
our key verse there in verse 4, 1 Peter 1, 4. To an inheritance incorruptible. We're born again into an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled. It does not fade away. Well, it's reserved in heaven for you. And we've got to find out who these people are. We've got to get this right. Who? For you. Reserved for you. Who? Does not fade away. Let me say this first. We know that earthly inheritances fade away. You left a fifty thousand dollars. It will fade. It, it it will be spent one way or another. You win the lotto. You will spend the money. Many people have won millions, and now they're trying to get Centrelink. Very, 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 very mismanaged money. <laughs> See, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He, he, he'll just knock you down and knock you down and knock you down. But anyway, reserved for who? For you. And, and a lot of people like to hear this and say, oh, that's me. But is it you? Is it you? Do, do we line up for this collection? Do, do we actually qualify to be the you in verse 4 and verse 5 tells us very clearly doesn't it verse 5 you know some people's biggest security or their most people's biggest security is their is superannuation their greatest treasure or their security in this day and age wasn't so much like that in the 60s or the 70s or the 80s but maybe the 80s they're starting to climb but superannuation well is no security today because it so many companies that go bankrupt and there's no claim and they actually spend more money trying to you know, uh, claim their money back, hunting down these crooked uh, companies. Okay? Uh, so let me say this: in in verse in verse uh, four, we know the inheritance is incorruptible. We know it's undefiled. We know it doesn't fade. But it's in heaven. So we've got to get there, haven't we, to get it? We've got to get to heaven to get this inheritance. Because <laughs> that's where it is. And then it tells us who the you are. Basically. Verse 5. The you are people who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last day so if this inheritance is for the saved it's not for those who think they're saved right? it's not for those who say once saved, always saved. It's for those who are saved. Kept by the power of God. Not by our own strength. I like the way that Peter put kept by the power of God through faith. The power of God will never keep us and it will never be able to keep us or strengthen us or we just won't be able to access the power of God 
mentally. It has to be by faith. We have to trust in the Lord. In other words, we have to do what Jesus says. You see movies, you see all sorts of things. You know, news on TV. Do you trust me? Do you trust me? What I say? Well, follow me. Do this, do that. Do you trust me? Do you trust me with your car? Take that off and connect it to this and it'll start. Do you trust me? All the little things, all through life. Do you trust me? Sister Melanie wanted her super roof fixed and she took it to Mike. Brother Mike Kelly, White Street Motors, and she trusted him and done a beautiful job. She got the blessing because she trusted him. Right? Just a little thing like that. My son took his car to White Street Motors. There's no commission on this promotion, and uh, yeah, it's still under White Street Motors, as far as I know. Yeah, thank you. Is that everything right there? Say again? White Street Auto. White Street Auto. We've got it right now. <laughs> you might have to you might have to buy the land out next door for the parking to bring the people in. Um, White Street Auto. Um, and my son trusted Mike Keely at White Street Autos. And he never looked back. He's laughing. Are we going to trust the Lord? Because it takes a lot of trust. To trust that someone has an inheritance for you on another planet. You know? Most inheritance in the world, people can see it. This is the house you will inherit. You know, the children see dad's house and mum's house. And, and this is the land. And they've been out there probably a hundred times. I don't know what the dad saying. <clears throat> I don't know what to do with this land. There's only a hundred acres, prime land in the middle of the city. I don't know what to do with it, you know. And the children are there. Oh, is this out? Yeah. If I die, uh, it, it, you inherit it. And they see it. They're all, oh yeah, well. But let me say, we have to qualify. The Lord forever says. We must endure if we're going to make it. We, we must be counted worthy when he comes. We know that, don't we? Romans 5. Romans chapter 5. Can we go there? This inheritance is in heaven. It's in heaven. Okay? And it's pending on salvation. If you're not saved, you're not going to touch it. You won't get there. You'll be in hell. That's another inheritance. That's the inheritance for the unbeliever and the sinner and the backslider that never came back. Romans 5 and the verses 1. 1. Therefore, having been justified by faith, there it is again. We have peace with Father through our Lord Jesus the Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into this power, into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in trouble, knowing that trouble produces perseverance in us. Perseverance character, character, hope. And this kind of hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Ghost who was given to us. And this hope we have in this inheritance will not disappoint us. Nothing can happen to your inheritance in heaven. Nobody can take it from you, only you. The devil can't take it from you. Right? Yet, the scripture may say, be sure no one takes your crown, or you can put forward slash inheritance. That's at your will. You choose to go their way, which is not the godly way or the way of the Lord. 
you will lose your inheritance, you will not be saved, you will not enter the kingdom, and there's only one other place after that, and that's the fires of hell. I was talking to a man on the street the other day, and he was very interested in what I was preaching in the ministry, and he said, would you take an invitation to our church? And I said, well, I'll wait on the Lord on that. Because you've got to be where the Lord wants you to go because I'm not my own and I don't do my own thing when I want to do it. And uh, we've been bought with a price and I get invitations uh, at different times from India and Africa and but I never go there because I don't have the witness. So I said to this bloke, the best thing for you to do is to go away and read this brochure and see what's on there and you read it and, and then you make a decision if you then want to invite me which I thought I won't hear from him again and I haven't and I said remember all those scriptures that are on that brochure remember who wrote them that all scriptures inspired by God and then you'll know if it's the devil I'm promoting or if it's Jesus. And then you know who I am. If I'm sent by the devil, I'll have the scriptures of Anton LaVey, most probably. I, I will have something contrary to scripture. And what we're hearing here today about reserve for you, who? Reserve for you in heaven. We have to be careful who Peter is calling you. Is it really you? Is there really a reservation for you? Have a look at the way you're living. Have a look at your life. Does it line up with the scriptures? We've got nothing else to line our lives, our lives up with. We have nothing. You can't line your life up with a religion or, 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 or a passing uh, fantasy or a government or, or a culture or a tradition, you can't line your life up with your parents or, or anyone else. You line your life up and you look at your life through the infallible, absolute doctrine of Christ. Then the living word Jesus will tell you if you're worthy of the inheritance. Because the word, the scriptures say in Hebrews 4.12, or let's go there, Hebrews, let's go to Hebrews, the writings of Hebrews, glory to the Lamb, the Lamb of God, eh? Come to take away the sin of the world and have mercy on us. Hebrews 4 and the verse is 12. The word of God is living and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul, spirit, joints, marrow, marrow gel, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intentions of the heart. The word will open it all up to you. The word of God. You can't say, oh, stop judging me. Stop judging me. Because it's the word that judges us. Jesus is the word and everybody said. Amen. Right? We have been begotten to a living hope. This hope will never die. As long as we walk by faith in the Son of God. And if anyone walks by faith in the Son of God, they're not going to be walking in sin. We will not be walking in darkness if we walk by faith in the Son of God. Ephesians. Let's go to Ephesians, please. Ephesians. Hey? Reserved for you. Who? Reserved for who? There's too much nilly-willy. There's too much once saved, always saved. Too much inclusiveness and, and, and unity without having unity with Christ. 
One world church is coming in fast. The doctrines, the, the new Calvinism is coming in. New Calvinism is nothing else but one saved, always saved, revisited. And it's only with a different package. More highly tuned for the hour we're in. Gal um, Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2. And we're going to go to verse 11. Therefore remember that you once Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands, that at that time you were without Christ aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope without God. And finish it off with a final blow in the world. What a, what a track record. Hey? What a track record. Without Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers from the covenants of promise, strangers from the inheritance, hey? having no hope. But we have a living hope in Christ by faith. Hey? We were called the uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision in the flesh by hands. And the Jews thought that was pretty clever, but Jesus is more clever because Jesus is God. And Jesus said, no, you should be circumcised of the heart, not the flesh. Hey? There's a lot going to go on before the inheritance, before we have a, a reservation there. A lot of people have their reservations about certain things, but a lot of people have reservations to go on a cruise or to go here, to go there, to do this. But do you have a reservation set today, now, in heaven? Reserved for you. Do you know that? Not someone telling you. Do you have that witness in your heart by the Holy Ghost? There is a table, hypothetically speaking, with your name on it. Reserved for Mary Lou. Reserved for Billy Joe. Reserved. You know. By faith. You know. You haven't seen anything? You're not faithless. Oh, show me. Show me, Joe. Show me. All right? Show me. 1 Peter 1. And the verse is, 4. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. All right? And then he says, For you... In verse 5, who are kept? You can join that. In the original writings, there's no gap. There's no 5 and 6. It just flows. Reserved for you who are kept by the power of God through faith. For salvation, ready to be revealed. See, it's not just kept by the power of God, but it's through faith, obedience. Someone say amen. amen. Hey? Through faith obedience. And there a lot going to go down between now and then. So we need endurance. We need to endure. Because each day gets harder. The days get more uh, uh, corrupt. Day after day. Things are getting worse. Everywhere you go. People are lying more today. It's all about self-preservation. They count their life dear to themselves. So they lie like pigs in mud. To, to, to just to save their own hide. Maybe to save their job. They lie. See? And they don't know 
the 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 end or the harvest of a lie, the repercussions, and how they how they're degrading themselves. How degrading it is to lie. It's so degrading that you you, you lie barefaced to someone. It means you don't respect them, you don't love them, you don't like them, and you don't care about them. You lie to them. Someone say amen. amen. But the world is so much about love, isn't it? So much. About, when can I tell a lie and it's okay? You can't tell lies. You don't want to tell lies and you don't tell lies if you, you are led by the Spirit. What do you got to lie about? You know it, it only brings about a maze of, uh, of heartache. One lie just snowballs. One lie. Look, look at the Garden of Eden. Just look at it. The devil lied to that woman. Now look at the mat. One lie, sister. One lie. Look at the mess. Just came down from generation to generation to the third generation. <coughs> Just goes on and on. Excuse me. Hey? Just goes on and on and on. Never ceases. But the world teaches people uh, it's okay to lie. And don't worry about it. Everybody lies. 1 Peter chapter 1 and the verse is 9. Receiving, verse 9. This is where the inheritance is. Receiving the end of your fight. The self of your souls and the incorruptible, undefiled, unfading inheritance that is in heaven. That's paraphrased, of course. But it's the end, not the beginning. Many start in faith, forward slash Galatians. Galatians, hey? They started in faith, didn't they? We just zip over and see Galatians 3. They started. The start is not the finish, is it? Hey? Galatians 3 and the verse is 1. O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth anymore? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified. This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are now being made perfect by the flesh, going back to your old ways, the old stomping ground, doing things your way, in the flesh. In the flesh. Every time I see that word flesh, I think Adamic. Every time you see that word flesh, that's what it's talking about, the Adamic. It's not necessarily talking about your skin. And a lot of people can't understand, what do you mean by the flesh? What do you mean by the flesh? It means the Adamic. The, the, the way you have chosen. You see, you didn't choose to be born again. He chose you. Right? As it says in John, born this time not by your own strength, not by anyone else's, but God's. Born of God. So how it even heightens the damnation, doesn't it? That he's done all of this. And yet we still treat him so lightly. We treat salvation so cheaply. And, and we talk so, so 
frivolously about salvation and heaven and Jesus and inheritance and, 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 and the Lord. We just talk so, oh, you know, it's just like another a, a thing at the shopping centre. As I said, um, as I said uh, in, in my um, introductory uh, review today, Jesus is something you go through when you are just young, you know? Or when you're cash strapped. Or lonely. Are you lonesome on Sunday? Are you lonesome on Sunday? Did you go down to the dead local church? Is it convenient for you that you go to that zoo? Are you lonesome? Are you lonesome tonight? Was it a job or a chick you were looking for that day? Maybe a bow or an arrow, they say. Don't you look sexy anymore? Well, the local church has an open door. Tell me, dear, are you lonesome on Sunday? <laughs> reserved for you. Oh, yeah, that's reserved for me. You sure eternal punishment's not reserved for you in blackness of sackcloth? Oh, no, not for me. I deserve better than that. Do you? Says who? My mum. Grandma told me. I deserve better than that. Oh, really? And where does she go to church? Oh, she's Roman Catholic to the core. Oh, right. <coughs> no, she's JW. She's JW. No, she's mum. Really? Well, she doesn't sound like a pilgrim. Hey, doesn't sound like the elect to me. Salvation is the end. That's the end. That's the last thing we get. You get a lot of things in the meantime. You've got to go through it. It says very clearly in 1 Peter, verse 7. The genuineness of your faith being much more precious than money. Who cares about money? Though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise and honour and glorify Jesus. Genuine faith. Many have faith, but not genuine. Genuine. It has to be genuine faith. Right? You know, uh, genuine faith. Genuine faith. The proof of genuine faith is that the person who has genuine faith does what the word says. That's how you know it's genuine. No other way. They live their life according to the word of God. If it's not genuine faith, it's demonic faith. You listening? Someone say amen. Everyone put your hand up like that and say, hello. All right. Is it me you're looking for? <laughs> I just wanted to see if everyone was awake. If it's not genuine faith, it's demonic. Because the demons had faith. They believed. The scripture says through James, even the demons believe. They have faith. But they don't do. There's a lot of difference. There's a lot of difference between having faith and having genuine Genuine faith. Like the apostles. 
Hey? Genuine faith. Let's go to 2 Peter. Chapter 1. Verse 1. Simon Peter, a bond servant and apostle of Jesus to Christ to those who obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Saviour. We have the righteousness of Father through Jesus by genuine, like, precious faith or faith that is like the apostolic man doing what the Lord says. It's never going to work. If someone gives you a diet and it's got three points, one, two, three, this is what you do. And you do too, it ain't going to work. You do one, it ain't going to work. The diet will only work if you do the three. We're never going to have an inheritance that is incorrupted, incorruptible, undefiled, never fades away, reserved in heaven. You might have an inheritance on earth. See, a lot of people have inheritances from parents. You know, parents have become so mean and so ungodly. Well, they're only humans, really. But they become so mean and ungodly and foolish and, and so self-deceived, they have this so-called love inheritance for their children. But their children have to jump through the hoops and they have to do things that are even ungodly and against the word of God to get it. And have to go along with those ungodly parents or they don't get the inheritance. Someone else's name is put in and yours is erased. I'd say, you know what you can do with your inheritance? You can give it to my enemy. <laughs> and by the way, you're not my mother and you're not my father or sister or brother because my mother, sister, father and brother they are those who do the word of God. That's Luke 8, 21. Everyone check that. Make sure I've got that right. They're my mother. Real mother. Real sister and real brother. You hear the word of God and do. Do it. Just do it. Nike knew more than most Christian churches. Nike knew more than the Calvinists. Just do it. Oh, you know, I'm trying my best. You lying devil. You lying thing. Now, actually, you're speaking the truth. You are trying your best, which is the very thing that mocks Jesus. You think you're going to do it by trying your best? You just mocked the cross. You just mocked everything Jesus done. When you said, I'm going to do it by trying my best. I'm going to try and do it by trying my best. Do you really think that can compare with what Jesus already done at the cross? <laughs> oh, really? You really think you're going into it, you're going to go into this uh, 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 deliverance from known sin by doing your best. You're deluded because your best is not even vapor when it comes to deliverance from sin. Your best is uselessness. Why do you think Jesus died on the cross? If you could do your best, and then you'd overcome. You know, some people say, oh, I've done my best, I used to smoke cigarettes, now I don't. Well, you just slapped Jesus in the face. You just told Jesus, I don't need you, I've done it myself. 
but you didn't do it yourself because you're really 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 not over it it's always there always there because you're not delivered from it because he hasn't delivered you from it that's why they permit people to call them to call them alcoholics as in alcoholics anonymous they say oh well i'm a recovering alcoholic or once an alcoholic always alcoholic and we're just going to teach you how to live with it and teach your family how to live with you and then they turn around and say hang on but they reckon these 12 steps are of god when i know very well that god only ever has one step and that is you departing from you <laughs> to him there's only one step with jesus he is lord give it up unless you give up your life to jesus you will never find it ever ever you'll be lost for eternity in the abyss in the eternal hellfire don't think that's a joke don't don't play play games with the scriptures they really do mean what they say really 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 truly hey an inheritance incorruptible undefiled and does not fade away reserved in heaven for you do you really think that would be some sleazy easy peasy thing to do do you really think that that's just for any freddie and mary lou in the street few find the narrow game few find this kind of inheritance <laughs> i tell you now i am so confident i am so convinced beyond any kind of reasonable doubt or any other doubt the road is narrow and difficult and few are they that find it they're not my words they're the words of the creator they cannot be wrong impossibility for them to be wrong and to even think that it might be wrong or it might mean something else is unbelief it's unbelief equals unsaved unsaved means no inheritance in heaven because you won't be there <laughs> you won't need a heavenly inheritance in hell and nor will i if i don't compete according to the rules oh that's another one of paul sheehan's made up judgments is it no it's scripture paul to timothy if you're going to run in an athletic race you compete according to the rules or you're disqualified you ask usain bolt he never ran according to the rules and he was drugged up and he pretended that he was the fastest man in the world and he won because he had drugs in his system and he had to hand back shame on you Usain Bolt shame on you big shame cheater look out for the cheater doing his John Travolta posture <laughs> and he had to hand the medal back didn't he or what was it a logie or something I don't know something useless something that you can't take out of this kingdom and this earth something just to add to the metal and the plastic and the paper trash that the world glorifies so much useless wranglings of men and women who are destitute of the truth many pakio i found a fight with more money many the christian you're a christian manny and you back down from the hornet because the hornet will flog you you can see it is all over his face didn't want to fight the aussie wanted more money just like hillsong just like joyce meyer benny hinn 
They don't attend churches with 50 people in them who are broke. When do you ever see Benny Hinn and George Meyer advertising, oh, we're going to the the uh, flat broke local church <laughs> in the middle of Burke <laughs> where there's 63 people and 60 of them are children. We're going to minister there. I mean, a great collection, wouldn't it? Hello, hell, oh. Look, I, I think we've got a part three coming up. We're really only just scratching the surface of this, aren't we? Hey? 1 Peter 1 I whom having not seen, you love. Though now you do not see Jesus, you love him, yet believing enables you to see him. Yet believing, you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory. You see that? You love, but you have not seen. That's a lot of difference to the love of the world, isn't it? A lot, of, a lot of men and women marry because they like what they see. And then they find out down the road. It's not really what they see. <laughs> Especially when they're born again. <laughs> and then when their eyes are open, they see what they marry. What am I doing? <laughs> I've been born again. You know what I mean? Best to get born again before you marry. <laughs> Go into it with open eyes. Oh, love is blind. Love is blind. No, it's not, you devil. Jesus is, is God and God is love and he ain't blind. He, he, he's omniscient. Omnipotent and omnipresent. Love is not blind. That is a lie. Lust is lust is blind. Oh yeah, lust will just blind you. I'll tell you now. Yeah, you know, I, I used to hang around nightclubs. <laughs> and the morning was another story altogether. You know, woke up this morning. Didn't know <laughs> what I had done. <sighs> Hang on a minute. Just wait on a minute. I just gotta go. I think I heard someone at the car. Somebody's trying to steal. <laughs> no. Lust is blind. Lust is blind. But love sees very clearly. Very, very clearly. Love is lucid thinking. God is love. He sees everything. He said there's nothing hidden to him. Nothing. Nothing hidden to Jesus. He sees the fool repeating their folly day after day. Day by day. Oh Lord. Day by day. Dear Lord, 1 Peter 1, and the verse is, uh, yes, 6. In this you greatly rejoice. He's talking about being kept by the power of God under salvation. He's talking about the inheritance. Greatly rejoicing. In this you greatly rejoice about the good news of the inheritance and God's power is there, accessible and available and ready just for you, packaged for that exact situation. 1 Peter 1, 6. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. God, we're going through trials and we think, oh, why me? 
What have I done? And the Lord says, you need this. You really need this. It's going to work a work in you. Okay? If need be. It's not all roses and chocolates with Jesus. Okay? In this you great rejoice. But, but, now let me tell you this. It might be for a, a little while. You know how long Jesus' little whiles are? Well, they range between one year and, and a hundred, moving on to sometimes a century, you know, but usually about a decade, you know. <laughs> well, uh, it was that chappy that walked in the wilderness for 40 years, Moses, wasn't it? 40 years in the wilderness. So his little while was 40 years because he really needed that, you know, the mo. The mo had to have a decent uh, thrashing on the threshing floor. And he will thrash and he will thoroughly purge his church, his threshing floor where the wheat goes. Someone say amen. Yeah, so... Then he goes on after the various trials in verse 7. So that, you can put in there, so that the genuineness of your faith, which is more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found that we will bring forth that... Uh, what's that scripture? Verse 7 is talking about... Um, Let's just go over to Colossians. This is the, the outcome the Lord's looking for. Can we just go to Colossians for a minute? Uh, no. It's, it's not Colossians. It's Ephesians. I'm very sorry about that. No, that's not Ephesians either. The scripture I was looking for is ministering about showing forth the praises of him who brought us out of darkness into the glorious light. Aye? Aye? And let me say that um, this will be to the prize. This will be to the prize. I just, it's such a simple scripture that is used so much, I just cannot lay my hand on it. That show forth the praises of him. This is Peter. Peter, I knew that I would lay hold of by the grace of God. Hallelujah. And this is the manifestation of that verse 7 in Peter. So let's go to Peter in the writings of 1 Peter. And the verse is chapter 2, verse 9. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of the darkness into the marvellous light, who once were not his people but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy but now have obtained mercy. And that verse 9 really parallels beautifully with verse 7 about the revelation of Jesus Christ or at the Lord Jesus coming. Verse 7, the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, glorify 
and honour Jesus. Not bring shame, but honour to Jesus. That we are showing for that he has brought us out of the darkness. That he would say, yes, come forward, my true and faithful servant, crown of life, have you won. Hey? So, at the end of the day, we really must rightly divide the word of truth, which is what we've been doing here today. Once saved, always saved doctrine does not rightly divide. Calvinism does not rightly divide the word of truth. There's a partiality there. To rightly divide the word of truth, it must be all pro Jesus. There can be no room for partiality of uh, race, for its last Jews or Gentiles or race, colour, uh, uh, um, family, um, husband, wife, children. There's no partiality. The Word of God shows no partiality to such things. So we must rightly divide the Word of the Lord as we read here in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 4. To an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. And then we'll go on uh, next week and we will uh, elaborate upon that again. And we'll go a little bit deeper into that. Who is this you? Is it you? As our title was today, reserved for you. Who? Do we have that? You know what? I firmly believe that if if that you is you, you, you are so distant from the world and the things of the world and the ways of the world and, and the, the, the uh, esteeming of the world. I really do believe that. Those who love the world and the things of the world don't have the love of Father in them. In other words, Jesus is not Lord. Because the love of the Father, according to Scripture, is Jesus. My beloved Son. Remember, he was getting baptised and come up out of the water and the Spirit come upon him. My beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Amen? Beloved Son, in whom I am well Talking of the man, Jesus. Of course, because Jesus always was. Jesus was always immortal. He was always God, just like the Father is God and just like the Holy Ghost is God. And just like there are three. And I go home to Father and I send another. And they're not just three things, they're three identities because Jesus said... I go home to Father and he called Father, he, and he said, and I will send another. And we know that Jesus is the I am he. And the, the other, he called him a he. He called the Holy Spirit a he, not a she. As the uh, satanic feminist like to say, you know, oh, how do you know it's a he? You know, true feminists follow Jesus. True feminists are feminine. <laughs> yeah, nah. they're not butch you know what I mean true, fem true feminism is f finesse you know it's very feminine everything they do is very feminine you know they're very prissy and very particular and they like that it's nice and tidy and uh, driving trucks in the Northern Territory, you know, <laughs> with a tattoo of Dad on their shoulder, you know what I mean? D A D D Y. Drinking a Jack Daniels as you're driving along, you know. <laughs> and in the other hand, there's the White Ox. 
<laughs> the arm out the window of the Kenworth. What you talking about, mate? I'll flog you in a minute. <laughs> I'll get out of the truck and flog you. <laughs> that is not a feminine one. That is not true feminism. That's satanic feminism. Like I mentioned about uh, believing. There's demonic believing. You know? There's demonic believing. There's a saying you believe but you don't do. That's like the demonic wisdom. See, you know the world, it, they have demonic wisdom. It's not pure. It's all screwed up, just like Eve was all screwed up in the garden. The devil got in her head and screwed it all up. And she went along with it. I mean, pretty simple, but you had to get your head screwed up over that. Don't touch the tree. It's a no-brainer, isn't it? And the devil come along, and, oh, doesn't he, you know, the old blowfly, you know, he comes along and maggots everywhere. Eh? And the big mess, that's why the world is out of quandrum in every section and every spectrum. It's all, that maybe could be, I don't know, government, it, 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 the magistrates, courts, the police, they're, all, they're still deciding whether it's okay, you know. And now they're about to sign the papers, men marrying men. Well, it's okay. They're not hurting anybody. You know what I mean? Not hurting anybody. Really? Just to say that is okay? Is destroying the fabric of society? Can you say amen? You might want to say, am I a wife? Well, that's our message today, hey? Twas a bowl of soup that caught the eye of Esau that tragic day. Eh? When old Esau gave up his right as a child of God, became the devil's prey. Bowl of soup, bowl of soup. Eh? Cost him everything. That's another teaching, isn't it? Such a small thing. Cost him his birthright. Cost of his birthright. One little thing like that, just a bowl of soup. So small. Oh no. I'm waiting for my inheritance, I am. Glug 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 glug. Hey! Waiting for my inheritance. <laughs> God is love. <laughs> Waiting for my inheritance. <laughs> and inheritance that one again is hell. <laughs> hey? Destroying the body, temple of the Holy Ghost. I think my question today was relevant. Or the Holy Ghost question reserved for you. Who? Who's the you here? And who's the ram? I mean, now, who, who's the you? Is it you? Only you can answer that. The Lord's already answered it. But only you can answer it for yourself. Everybody said, on this fifth day of the third month of 2017, I'll have a message reserved for you. Who? Is that you? Who are you? Who?